Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of the Dead Eye. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules, Goose, you know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the Dead Eye, everybody, which is a planet far out in space where we are going to have Mad Max Road Warrior style adventures in this solo push your luck card game. Now, I've got the game almost set up. I've got my core deck of cards that always starts out with the same good and bad cards in it that I will be encountering on this hostile landscape and driving like crazy to stay ahead of. I also start with five hope. So I've got this whole deck of hope cards, but only five of them will show up, which means every time you play, you're going to get different items and opportunities and encounters that will show up. You never know quite for sure what you're going to find on the dead eye. So let's find out. My hope is one, two, three, four, five, and the rest are gone. Same thing is true for this strength deck. Uh, digging, uh, you know, jags, digs, uh, you know, flats, piles, all kinds of stuff. So five of these cards are going to represent, well, really, my life meter. One, two, three, four, five. If I run out of strength or I run out of hope, I lose. How do I win? I find safe haven, which is in this story deck right here. And this story deck is actually composed of three chapters. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and Chapter 3. And if you want, you can play an epic big game of the Deadeye and try to get through all the chapters in one sitting. But that would take quite a while. Uh, quite a while. And which is why the game actually comes with a save system that means if you make it to Safe Haven, the, you know, your first Safe Haven, by making it through these cards, you can save your progress. Because over time, <clears throat> your deck builds up and your hope and uh, strength you know, get torn down. So you can save your progress and pick up where you left off in the future. It's very, very cool. So we are now set up, ready to go. All the decks are shuffled. And before I start, there's one more game component you may have noticed. It's 3D glasses, folks, just like the kind that I wore as a little kid in the 70s to go to see 3D movies in the cinema. You know, the whole red and uh, blue, uh, you know, lenses. And man, I wish you were here with me, folks, right now, because these are awesome. I mean, let's just check them out. I'm looking great, uh, just like one of Biff's thugs and uh, Back to the Future. But the thing is, these do an amazing job making the 3D here pop. You can't tell, but to me, I'm wearing these right now, and this feels like it's miles in the background, and this is popping in the foreground. And, you know, everything about it, the cards themselves. Uh, you know, when I, I look at this tunnel, I can see falling down, or this, this robot is, well, actually, this robot's kind of deeper in the card, and the word bot is jumping in. The, it's a really wonderful sense. I mean, you know, this foreboding tunnel, uh, or this tower, off in the distance, or um, you know this robot, um, you know with all the icons popping in front of me. So that's what it looks like to me if I wear the glasses. And I wish I could show it to you, but it just won't work. Uh, you need to see it in person. But the nice thing is, if you are susceptible to headaches, which honestly I thought I was, but these haven't really bothered me at all. I've worn them for upwards of 15-20 minutes and not had a problem with them. But if you just don't like the 3D effect, the design of the art ensures that you don't need to, that you can still kind of make out the washed out, worn out landscape. I mean, you know, so you can see how, yes, there are, you know, multiple things so that this would actually have some 3D, actually this one doesn't, but okay, yeah, this one, you would, you can see how there's different like 3D depth to, to the, to the hills and whatnot in the background. But if you don't wear the glasses, you can still make out that, oh yeah, there's a background off there. And it's just kind of this rainbowy haze of this strange alien planet we're on. Anyway, though, so uh, the 3D is a wonderful effect. I've enjoyed it immensely, but I'm going to play without it today and give you an idea of what it means to try to stay alive in the Dead Eye. So how does it work? Well, the rule book has a really great summary of all the rules right here on the back. The first thing we do every turn is we check to see if there's a story update. What that means is this is our story deck, which again was put in a specific order. And if I look at the top card, which is, it says, reveal this even if I haven't traveled anywhere. So Saul Flair means only one thing. The captain misjudged the suck. Those orbers have good charts. So that means in this story at this point, I'm looking for some charts because we're lost. Um, and so I reveal this even though I have not traveled any distance. Now the next card says reveal it once you have traveled further than two distance. So we've got to travel a ways before we can find out what this is. 
So this is going to stay here, but at the beginning of every turn, we check. Can I reveal the top card? Once, we, once we've gone at least three distance, we can reveal this. But in the meantime, we will reveal that there's a wreck out there somewhere. The wreck is two distance away. And if I can get to it, I can get a map. And as you might imagine, that map could help out as we try to find Safe Haven, which is buried in this deck. So, we need to find this wreck, but to do it, we need to travel two distance. So, this is a potential location. Now, there could be times in the game where you have multiple locations queued up that you could travel to once you've gone enough distance, but for now, I can't. So, we always deal with story. At the beginning of every turn, we check to see if we can reveal stuff. Then, we have an encounter. Now, there could already be a card here in the encounter slot, but right now, there is not. So, if it's empty, fill it either with a destination that we can reach, or with the next card from the draw deck. Now, we have no destinations we can reach, so it's going to be the next card from the draw deck. Let me shuffle up one more time. And I don't want to see the tox. Don't show me any tox. Here we go. Tox is what, the bad event that's in here. Our first card that we will encounter is... A bot. I was just showing you this bot a little bit ago. So, this bot tells me a few things. First of all, if I can deal with this robot, um, I get the Laz part, which is an item I can use to discard heat. And that is everything. Uh, if too much heat builds up, I cannot complete obstacles that I run in, uh, you know, um, you know, obstacles I run into. If too heat builds up, this bot will get me. And that would be bad. But if I can spend one juice, then I will get the bot, I'll convert it into parts, and I'll have the Lazarus effect that I could use later on. So, um, first of all, remember, um, when, if the encounter space is empty, you either take a location, if you've got one that you can reach, I don't, or you take the top card. Now, the big choice happens. Now that the encounter is in place, and remember, the encounter could have held over from the last turn, um, I check to see if there is a bad or a good outcome. Uh, for bad gets happen first, and if bad doesn't happen, good can happen. If neither bad nor good happens, then I have to make a choice. Do I evade the, um, uh, the encounter, or do I face the encounter? Alrighty. So, what does that mean, good and bad outcomes? This is saying that if two heat builds up, that's kind of like two fails at me trying to deal with this robot, then I'll fail. And the bad outcome says both of those heats will get recycled into the deck, so they'll come back and haunt me again. But actually, nothing else bad happens. This must be a passive bot. It's not actively trying to attack me. I'm just trying to figure out how to take this thing apart. But if I take too much time, if too much heat builds up, I'll fail and I'll give up. So all I need is one juice. So my choice is to either face this, which means it stays here, and I try to earn one juice before I have two heat. If I instead choose to evade, then what happens is I look at the top of the card. This is a juice card, and it means I run away, and instead, because I didn't waste any time on this, I've earned some juice. And I need juice to complete other cards that I will face. Now, I would like to get this bot. This would be awesome. Um, it allows me to discard heat, and it's easy to do, because I only need one juice to succeed where I need two heat to fail. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I will face this card. And as we're reminded here, what that means is I add the next card from my draw deck to an icon stack, which means I am now either going to draw heat, which is bad, or juice, which is good. Juice! Oh, baby. Yes, I'm very happy with that. Now, that means I've missed out on the opportunity... Well, I've missed out on the opportunity to deal with the skins, which is clearly a rival biker gang, which is very bad. Um, although, if I, can, if I can make good with the skins, I could have earned some gas. Um, but it's very, very difficult. I need three juice, three successes, and only one failure would make me lose here, which means they just leave, because um, they want all my juice before they'll give me gas. All right, but anyway, none of that matters because I'm facing this, which means these are multi-use cards. Uh, they either become an encounter you deal with or the means to deal with it. I put the juice over here. If I instead had drawn, say, this tail, then I'd be halfway towards failing. But I didn't draw the tail. I drew the skins and I got some juice. Boom. Nice. Now, we continue the loop. We check to see... Is there a new story? No, there's not. There's not going to be any new stories until we've traveled three. So we don't have to worry about that. Is there an encounter? Yes, there already is. So we don't have to draw a new one. Um, is there a bad outcome? If two heat had built up, there'd be a bad outcome, but there's not. Is there a good outcome? Yes, there is. I have successfully um, taken this bot apart, and I have used it to create Laz. Nice. So it says... 
We, are we, we didn't have a bad outcome. We have the good outcome. This says, discard the juice that I used. So this juice goes into my discard pile. And so it's out of my deck. And that's important, but I'll come back to that in a second. And uh, this icon means claim this as parts. I now have last. Now, unfortunately, every time you claim parts, it comes in tapped. So I can't use it yet. I need to rest, which is one of the cards in this deck. There is a rest card in here that will allow me to untap it so I can use its power later on. So that was that was that was a great first hand. I'm very happy with that. I haven't traveled at all, so I can't get to the wreck, but I have um, you know, taken apart a bot and made it my own. Okay. So that was that. We now, once again, check the story. There's no updates. We need a new encounter. I still can't reach the wreck, so we see whatever's next in my deck. And it is, as I was just saying, it's that tail. And so, what's going on here? Well, this is still a good one to face because I need three fails and only two successes. If I fail three times, I lose two hope. Remember, my strength and my hope, these are my life meters. If I run out of them, I die. So I'd lose um, two hope. But if I with two juice, I get to turn this into the Ruba. Alrighty, which I can also use to postpone heat. So that's really handy too. So I gotta decide. Am I gonna face this or am I gonna evade it? Remember, if I evade, that just means I run away from this tail road and it comes over here, and now I've earned some heat. Which means whatever comes up next is gonna be tougher to deal with. I don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and face it. I'd still like to find some travel cards, because that's my real goal, but we'll just go on ahead and face it. Alright, so. Um, after we, if there's a thing here, we now, or actually I should say, we check to see if there's a bad thing. No, we check to see if there's a good thing. Then we decide to face it or evade. I'm not evading, I'm facing it, which means the next card will, well, we'll see how well I dealt with it. It's some heat. Vig. All right. So now, two more heat and I fail. Uh, so now I got a 50-50 chance. Although it's not as simple as that, because remember, this is a deck of... This deck's composition is known at the beginning of the game. There's two events, Tox and Rest, six Heat cards, and six Juice cards. And so you really need to keep track. So far, two of the Juice cards have come out, and two of the Heat cards have come out. So actually, it is a 50-50 chance of whatever the next card I draw is. If it's more... you know, But, you know, if I'd already burned through a lot of Heat, then I can maybe... Uh, draw with more safety and assuredness that the statistically I'm more likely to get the juice when I need it. So anyway, so I'm, I'm facing it. It didn't work out very well. Now we go to the next round. Um, does a bad thing happen? No, it doesn't. Does a good thing happen? No, it doesn't. I now have to decide again. If I evade, I can still just run away from this, but now I've run away from two heat, which means the next thing that come, the next encounter will almost guaranteed to fail. But you know what? Here's the deal. You may think, oh my gosh, that would be the worst thing in the world to happen. That um, I, you know, I fail this encounter and I lose two hope. But if I do that, yes, I'm that much closer. If I lose all hope, I die. But whenever I lose hope, that means I take the hope card, I put it in my discard pile, and all hope provides juice. So I'm basically just transferring my hope from here to here. And I'm upping the number of juice cards, which means I'm more likely to succeed in the future. So, if there's a card I'm going to fail at, I don't mind so much failing this because I'm going to stack the deck. Yes, I'm going to be closer to death, but the deck is going to be a lot more friendly for me. So, let's go on ahead, and I'm not going to run away from this. I'm going to encounter it again, and my next card is a Refinery. Okay, I just need one more Juice as opposed to two Heat. I'm on my way. So that was that round. Once again, we decide... Uh, all right. Uh, is there an encounter? Yes. Did a bad thing happen? No. A good thing happen? No. And, by the way, uh, you go through all these steps because at the end of each of these steps, if I had a part ready, I could use the part and get rid of some of this heat before it hits me. You have a lot of control in this game. I mean, this isn't a game of, well, just make your decision and then see what happens. Um, you know, that, that happens too, but you have a lot more control. So, again, am I going to run away from this? No, for the reasons I've already said. And I've got, a, I've got a better shot. I only need one more juice to succeed at this, and then I'll have two items. So let's see what my next card is. It's a gap. Okay, things just got worse. All right, so now this is the push your luck element. We go to the next round. Nothing bad has happened. Nothing good has happened. I can run away. But then the next card is guaranteed to blow up in my face. And if I want something to blow up in my face, I want something that gives me, you know, let's effectively gives me hope. So let's just see. Come on. Um, although, and again, I like my chances. I mean, well, my chances are not quite as good. It's still 50-50. Because there's three 
um, heat, and one, two, three. So, come on, flip that coin. Although remember, there are events in here as well. And I might get hit with an event, and that could be either awesome. If I could get hit with the rest event right now, this would be amazing. But I might get hit with the tox. Let's find out. It's a melt. Boom. Nice. Okay, so that turn is over. We go on to the next turn. Uh, is there an encounter? Yes. Did a bad thing happen? No. Did a good thing happen? Yes. We made the tail, everybody. We finished the road. We needed two total juice. And it says, when I succeed, both of those juice cards go into the discard pile. Now, I've got a lot more heat and a lot less juice available to me. But, I claim, um, demons raging on the desert dust, I get this wheel um, that comes in used but I can use it later on to recycle heat. This one lets me uh, or to post or lets me discard heat, which means I could take a heat and get rid of it completely. This lets me postpone heat, which means I take a heat and I put it at the bottom of the deck so it'll still come back. Because hey, maybe I really wanted, maybe I really really wanted to jump this gap. But it's it's uh, I can't because it's out of the deck. If I had this tail, I could use the tail to take this, put it at the bottom of my deck, and then I could deal with it later, as an example. But anyway, so far I haven't got those. All right, so, so far, this is going great. Um, I haven't run afoul of anything, uh, you know, but I'm running out of juice. And so let's see what the next round is. So again, we uh, don't have a story. I need a new thing. I haven't traveled to yet, so I still can't get to the wreck. So let's see. I haven't even seen any cards that let me travel. Okay, the gap would let me travel one, as an example. Let's see what the next card is. It is tracks. All right. And there went one of my juice cards. All righty. So this needs two juice or two. And, well, this is bad news, folks. Here we go. I had to encounter it. Now, before I can make any choices, I have to check. Did a bad event happen? Yes, it did. There are two heat. The heat that I've avoided has finally caught up at me. I am not going to make I'm not going to be able to follow these tracks right now. So what happens? I, I um, burn these two heat cards. These go to the discard pile. And, as I said, I lose two hope. And this card also. So there's some juice that went into the discard pile. And two hope goes into the discard pile. That's bad. I've only got three left. But there's more juice. There's more juice in here than there is heat. So that's going to help me in the future. All right. So, and uh, man, I'm almost through this deck. Pretty soon I'm going to rest, I think. Let's see what happens. We go on to the next one. There's no encounter. Find out. And it's a tunnel. All righty. So, again, this is easier for me to do. I just need one juice as opposed to two heat. But this, man, if I fail this, I lose two more. Yes, it, I didn't mind losing a couple of hope, but I don't want to lose two more hope. If I succeed at this, I'll get one distance traveled, which means I'm almost to the wreck. And once I get to the wreck, then um, failing at the wreck doesn't do anything bad. Nothing bad happens at failing to get into the wreck, but succeeding gives me the map. And it gets me closer to the next chapter. So I gotta decide: Am I going to evade, which means heat is building up? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna face the tunnel. We're gonna try and get in there. So, although we're running out of cards, we're running out of cards. Let's see what the next one is. It's some heat. Oh dear. All right. So now I'm really worried. Again. Um, now, what I should have been doing is keeping track. I mean, how many heat and juice is there left? Two of these cards are events, and. Uh, you know, I, I, if I if I weren't explaining everything as I went, I'd be keeping track because it's a very six uh, six of six. Let's just go on ahead and look. There is you're right. There's both the events. They were at the bottom. Okay, it's a 50-50 chance right now. Oh my gosh! Alrighty. So, although here's the thing, it's more, not a 50-50 chance. There's a one in four chance that I draw the juice I need. There's a one in four chance I draw the heat that will make me lose two hope and I'm almost lost the game. I do not want that to happen. I could choose to run away. But there's two other cards in here. One of them is rest. And if I draw the rest card, that means I get to untap these. If I untap these, I can tap them and get rid of the heat and guarantee that I can succeed at the tunnel. So, half of these cards save me, which is why I'm going to continue. Here we go. No, no, don't, I, I, okay. No heat. No, yes! Okay, a dune. We missed out on going to the dunes, but that's okay. We got some juice. Now, once again, we go through, um, right, there's an encounter. Did a bad thing happen? No, there's only one heat. Did a good thing happen? Yes, it did. So, 
we have made it through the tunnel. I lose my juice card. It goes into my discard pile, which remember has more juice than not because of the uh, hope. And I have traveled one. It's like we, I've scored one point. As soon as I score one more point, I could go to the wreck and then with two juice, I can get the map. And the map, as you can see, is required to complete this run. I'm gonna need that map eventually. Um, plus, once I travel three, we can get, we can reveal the next card and find out what awaits us. All right, so that was cool, but now my juice is gone. There's more heat. Oh, by the way, uh, this hasn't happened yet. So, I, I gotta keep going until I find safe haven or until I die. So let's go. Boop. It's resting time. That's what I'm happy to see. Alrighty, so I can either activate my parts or um, I can discard hope. Which remember, which seeds more good stuff into my deck, but it also gets me closer to death. And if I discard hope, that means I would postpone this event. It would go to the bottom of the deck and I could do it later. Why would I want to give up hope to do it? Well, one, I might want to stack more good stuff in the deck. Two, I might not, at this point, oops, I might not have any items. And it'd be really terrible to get the rest with no parts. But since I do have parts, I've been waiting for this rest. I'm going to I'm gonna bring the you know, rest, the rest and talks, the, the two events, they are not encounters. When you draw them, you immediately resolve them, and then you continue like normal. I am not going to um, postpone this. I'm going to get my, uh, my parts up and running, and there it goes. Okay, so there's talks, and there's one more heat. So things aren't looking good. Let's find out what it is. It's the talks. Had to catch up with me. I was. Th this is. Um, this is going. This is a great first round. That the talks held off this long. The coursing fire. Malevolent portent. I right now have to choose. Give up one of my strength, which is another life meter. If I run out of hope or strength, I lose. And here's the problem. I don't mind giving up a strength right now. It's not a big deal. Except you might have guessed this. Every strength card puts more heat in the deck. As my strength goes out, I can't keep up with the heat as much. So, um, I do this. Or, if I had any juice, which I don't, but if I did have juice, I could discard that juice, which means I'm going to have a harder time dealing with my next encounter, but I could bury it at the bottom of the deck, and I could put off the talks. I don't think I'm going to put it off right now. I'm just going to deal with it, and we've got some strength there. And finally, the last card of the deck, and... It's a bug, a big scary scorpion, which actually has an excellent 3D effect. You can see how there's the multiple layers, but even still, even if you're not wearing glasses, you can totally make out. It's a gigantic scary scorpion, and there's a 50-50 chance of beating it, except not really, because I've already got some heat, and I've got no juice, and my deck is empty, which means at the end of the turn, I'm going to redraw, which is important because if I could act right now before I got a new deck, I could say, use the tail to postpone the heat, which means it would go into my hand. And then I could say, oh, I'll evade this and I'll put this out here because this is an easier thing to beat. Uh, because this is a two and two, this is a three and two, and I'd rather face a phantom than a bug right now. But I don't have to get too fancy right now. I think I'm just going to save my parts for a rainy day and just shuffle my discard pile and make a new draw deck. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it, this is definitely a favorable deck. I put two juice in here and only one heat. One, two, three heat is out versus one, or one, two, three, four heat. So this is a very juiced up deck. I'm feeling pretty good. Plus, as I go through the deck, if, if when the strength card that I put in comes up, I know this is heat. And on the flip side, I know this is juice. So getting these cards into the deck, well, it makes me weaker because I'm getting closer to dying, but it gives me more control over the push your luck aspects of the game. So anyway, so we shuffle up a little bit, shuffle up, I guess, and boom. All right, so it is time to uh, go. All right, so I've done that, and now, does a bad event happen? No. Does a good event happen? Now, am I going to evade this, which means it gets put over here, or am I going to face it? Now, I know if I face it, I'm going to fail, because I can see that uh, there's a strength right there. And if I fail, I'm going to lose more strength. I do not want that to happen. But before I have to make my choice, um, you know, after I check for the outcomes, if no outcome happened, before I make my choice, I can use a part. So let's do that. Let's use this tail and take this and put it at the bottom. And because I'd like to face this, because I've, I've got a feel, good feeling I could do this. Now, 
Strictly speaking, you're supposed to go in face down, but that introduces a memory element that I hate. I can't stand memory in games. Um, and maybe you could memorize, right, I put in an event, and I postponed this, and I postponed that. I just like to put them face up because if, if I had a better memory, I would remember that there's a heat thing. Although all I do is look at say, okay, I know heat's coming in the future because I buried it. Cheating, I know, I don't care, I hate memory in games, and I love this game. So this is a little Rotto variant to get rid of the memory element. Alrighty, so, um, I use this, and now I've got to decide if I'm going to face this thing or not. Because if I run away, then it comes over here. Which means, well, um, then I get to face this. Do I want to beat the bug? Ah, <sighs> well, I know I'm going to have a problem beating the bug because I'm already starting under the gun because there's going to be one heat if I put this out here now. So I think I'll just run away from the bug. Bye-bye, bug! Bye-bye! Okay, so that was that. And I missed out on getting the spikes, which is another way for me to postpone heat. All right, so uh, go to the next round, and it's a dig. All right, so now, I might play the game and there might not ever be any digs because remember, there were a whole bunch of strength cards and a bunch have been left out. So in this game, I am going to get the chance to find a digger. And a digger is pretty easy for me to deal with. Two heat versus one juice. This is a juiced up deck. Spinning burrow from the malt pit. And if I defeat it, or if I, if I uh, succeed at it, I will get the drill. Which, um, when I am using in a distance encounter, I can use this to get rid of heat. So, it's another way to get rid of heat, but only in certain circumstances. So, okay, this is out here, and now I've got to decide. Do I evade it? In which case, oh, well, then there's more heat to be on that, although I can use the bot to get rid of that heat. No, I'm going to face it. And I don't know, but this is very likely juice. If it's not, though, I will fail. Oh, 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 oh. Um... No, that's not true. That's not true. Because after I draw the card, and if it becomes heat, at the end of facing it, I could use this and get rid of the heat. So, you know, there's no whammies. Let's find out what's going on. It's some juice. Alrighty, boom. Uh, once again, I avoid the skins. And uh, so we go to the next round. There's already an encounter here. So um, does a bad thing happen? No. Does a good thing happen? Yes. And we've got the skins. It says, get rid of that juice. Sadly. Bye-bye, skins. And take this as an item. Now I need rest to get these back online. Okay, and the heat is still there. Let's go on. And, oh, it's a rock. Oh, and by the way, oh yeah, I'm sure. I should, I should have mentioned. I know this is going to be juice. I know it because I can see it. So what is it? It's a rock. Okay. Folding time and space. Some never leave its influence. So this is a very hard thing to deal with. Either to succeed or... Or to fail. And now, if I spend all this time trying, and if I fail, well, two of the heat will get discarded. Two of them will go back to the bottom of the deck. My choice, by the way. And I will lose the tunnel. I will lose the only distance I've traveled. Whereas if I succeed, well, um, it's worth one point per distance in my distance. So that means there it would be, if I can complete this, it's worth two because there's two here, and that would be enough to find the wreck and to reveal the next thing. So I gotta decide. Am I gonna try to deal with this thing that folds time and space? I could get lost in it forever. But remember, this is a juiced up deck. I can get rid of the heat. And this would allow me to kill two birds with one stone, but I'd have to build up a lot. And there is still heat in here, but I do have one more way to get rid of it. And I have one more rest in here too. And let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Let's try and uh, solve the rock. So I gotta draw a card. It's some juice from the dunes. All right, we go to the next round. Does a bad thing happen? No. Good thing happen? No. Um, so, am I going to run away? You know, if I run away, then probably whatever this is, I will guaranteed succeed at. Just like that. But I don't know what it is. So that's an interesting choice. Do I just evade this now so that the next card comes out and I get an instant success? Nah. If it starts going bad for me, I'll give up on this. But I, I, I want to complete this. This will be awesome. So let's just... It's some heat. Urgh. Drat. Okay, we go to the next round. Still nothing bad happens. It's... What the heck? This was not the way it was supposed to go. This heat is building up fast. Bot! Um, discard the heat! Alright, so we'll get rid of one of these heats. So, um, uh... Because, you know, I'll get rid of... I'll, I'll get rid of the Vidge, because I don't need the grip right now. Uh, this might get recycled, in which case it's a more distance I could go for. Alright, so, now I'm in big trouble. But again... This should be a good deck for me, although I've got no more parts. But if I rest, I can rejuvenate these things, and then I can totally finish it. So, what the what? Oh my gosh. Oh, wait. oh no, no. Oops, I had my deck upside down. Here we are, here we are, here we are. There we go. All right, everything's fine. There we go. All right, everything's fine. 
And I'm waiting for the other um, hope. All right, and there we go. Whew. Next going around, I did it. I have defeated whatever the, the space warpy thing is. All righty. So, two of these go away. Two of them go to the bottom of the deck. Which ones do I want to see? This is easier to solve. I'll, I'll say goodbye to the tracks because that's a tougher one to do. And I'll say goodbye to the dune. Those are both tougher. These are easier because a lot more uh, room for failure and to get those successes. So these get discarded. They go back. And again, I'm supposed to put them face down, but I don't like to memorize stuff. So I know that there's some heat and some juice coming. Because again, I would memorize that. But anyway, I've defeated this. This is I have traveled. Oh, and it's too bad. If I'd had my digger, this was a case where I was trying to, um, you know, travel. And the digger could have gotten rid of heat. But anyway, so I now have one, and this is worth the number of cards, two, so that's three. So folks, it's story time. Check if the reveal conditions. Do I have more than two distance? Yes, I do. So we have just revealed there's an outpost out there. Sleep with one eye open. Um, so, and this is where I could find... Uh, I, this is where I can look through the next three cards of the deck. I can scan the deck and know exactly what is coming. So now I have two destinations off in the distance. I have, or, And let's look at the next one. The next one, when you know it, I've got to have a map. So I cannot reveal the third step until I get to the wreck and find the map. And so, remember, all the way up till now, folks, it's always been, hey, well, I can't travel. I haven't done enough distance yet. So I just keep having encounters. But now, I could go to the outpost, get the nav, which lets me... Or I could get the map, which means I'll have this one available to me. And I got to choose. Which one do I want? Well, this one, I can't really fail at because nothing bad happens if I fail. It just goes in the discard pot. It just comes back up here and I'll have to try again later. Um, but this one... I could just get an instant success. But if I fail at this one, if I fail at the outpost, I'll lose some hope. I don't want to lose any hope right now. So let's go on ahead. Let's try and find that wreck because we've traveled far enough. And I've got no parts that can help me with this. Oh, and in fact, actually, um, actually, what's going to happen is, I know what's going to happen. I already have two heat built up. And um, oh, nothing bad can happen here. No bad effects. So heat can build up all at once. But, um, once I've, yeah, so let's just go on ahead and get to that wreck. Next up, we've got, oh, it's resting time. Yes, I'll rest. Thank you. And then it is talks time. Oh, do I delay this? No, I can't delay because I don't have any juice. So there's some more heat. I'm, I'm dying over here, but the talks goes away. And then, hey, there's one, two. And now there's some more heat. And, um, you know, and I know what's coming up again. These should have been face down. But, boom, I found the wreck. And I've done this. Alrighty. So, I now have a map. Use the map to discard the top card of the deck. So, this comes in tapped. I've still got to operate this, which allows me... If I, if I see this is a bad card because it's a strength card and I know it's going to be heat, or if I just know what it is because I have used the nav computer to scan ahead, I can dump stuff. But, more importantly... Um, next go around on the story, we've got the map, which means I've revealed the dome, which needs nine distance. I can't get here until I've traveled nine distance, but this is my first haven. If I can get that nine distance before I run out of strength and hope, then I will have completed the first chapter and I can level up, etc. And I could save my progress and stuff like that. So, but it's going to be a while before I can even try to get there. Because I've only traveled three distance. i got a lot more stuff going on. Um, and, oh man, the heat is on. Woohoo! The heat is on. All right. Oh, and, 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 where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Okay, yes. So this was a wreck. It said both of these got discarded. And now I've got a map and I need to rest before it'll come into play. And I've got one more card, which I already know is the Spore. So, and then my hand is empty, which means I'm going to have to take the card and discard it again. And here's the thing. This is a great one to have at the bottom of the deck, because even with all this heat built up, bad things didn't happen! And I could say, hey, boom, boom, and I could kill two of the heat so I could go for it. Um, I've also got the dig, but this isn't a travel one, so the dig won't help me um, deal with the spore that I'm now facing. Deadly. 
to foreign life. Um, and if I, oh man, if, if I lose at this spore, I lose because all three of my hope will go. And if I succeed, I get this. I can uh, discard this to prevent the loss of any hope. Oh, even on a turn where I might lose a whole bunch of hope, I can just use the spores um, by opening the can. Ooh. So I would like to beat that, which means I want to beat back the heat. But, uh, again, I got to get the new deck out and shuffle it up. And by the way, it didn't have to be the Spore. I knew, I knew this was a good thing. I could have said, hey, let's start trying to travel to the outpost. But if I did that, um, before I even got a chance to put this into play, it would have automatically failed because I've already got that heat built up. Or it wouldn't have, because again, I can I can use my I can use these guys to get rid of them, but I want to get that spore. We'll worry about the outpost later. We gotta shuffle up again. And the race through the dead eye continues. But I think I'm gonna stop right there, folks. That should be a pretty good idea of the flow of the game. If you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.